Hello, and welcome to Prairie Pulse. Coming up a little bit later in the show, we'll hear a musical performance from the Jeff Krause Trio. But first, Matt O'Lean got a chance to sit down with a special guest. And my guest is Beth Sleddy, the West Fargo Superintendent of Schools. She has a big job over there. Welcome to the show. Thank you Thanks so much. For being Glad here. to be here. Uh, first off, before we get into issues with the school district, uh, tell folks a bit about yourself, where you're from, your background. Well, I'm originally from Manoman, Minnesota. I grew up in a large family, youngest of eight children. Um, lived in the same household, um, enjoyed my school years. Um, after leaving high school, I attended NDSU and then MSUM to pursue a degree in elementary education. My first job was teaching sixth grade at Natawash, Minnesota. And um, from there, I moved on to Harwood, North Dakota to be a sixth grade teacher um, where I stayed for seven years. Um, following that time when I was teaching, I was um, afforded some opportunities into leadership and I've held various jobs within the district. So I've been with the district for 25 years mm -hmm. and have found West Fargo to be my home and um, the school district is an amazing place. And I've, I've had the opportunity of really seeing the growth and the changes over time. And it's, it's been an exciting career for me. And how has the transition gone? This is a big job. You were, you know, got the job earlier this year. How has that transition gone? Well, in my past, I've always pursued only the next step in, in my career opportunities. So when Dr. Flowers de decided that he was going to retire, I wasn't sure I was even going to apply, but after a lot of thought and careful consideration, I decided that I would. And given the experiences that I've had, um, seven years in the district office, I did have a very good idea of what I was getting myself into. The transition has gone well. Um, we have an amazing district leadership team, so it's um, just stepping into the to the next step and then continuing the work that had already been started. So maybe your learning curve wasn't mm -hmm. quite as steep as maybe someone who might have been hired from outside the district. Correct. Yeah. I've been a part of all the task force um, strategic planning teams. I've been a part of the data teams. Um, so I really have been a part from the very ground level with the district, um, especially since the growth began. I, I really do feel fortunate in that we have such a strong leadership team and so everybody does their job. For some superintendents, um, particularly in a smaller district, you have to know a lot about everything. But in a larger district, you do have experts in the areas of business and human resources, um, curriculum instruction. So it's really just empowering the people that you are working with to do their jobs. And I'm able to work with a fantastic team. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's talk about this growth because yes. this district is growing yeah. by leaps and bounds. Take me through this. How many elementary schools, middle schools, and high schools are there and where's the growth happening and how are you managing that? Well, the growth really started, um, we were trying to think back to what year it really started to take off. And I think back in 93, um, at, I think I started in 94, but it was in 93 we were growing by about 100 students per year. Now we're up between four and 600 students a year. And the growth is really happening on the south end. Um, people will ask, well, why, you know, why this rapid growth? Um, it's flood protected area. We have many opportunities. Um, the economics um, of our area are very, very good for um, pursuing different careers, pr different jobs. We have three universities in the metro, um, two large hospitals other flourishing businesses. So I think families are looking for work. They're looking to live a prosperous life and West Fargo is a fantastic place to do that. We currently with that growth have 13 elementary schools, two middle schools, two high schools, a community high. We started a public preschool, but we also have a preschool for special education students and just uh, various other facilities. We have a um, aquatic center, um, we have a hockey arena or an activities arena, sports arena. Um, we're working on a central kitchen on transportation department is now newly established. So we've got projects happening everywhere all the time. <laughs> There's always something going on. And where are the new schools being built? Okay. I know we got a new high school coming, but there's Right. You have to get some more elementary schools, don't you, as well? Well, we're opening, we've been opening up almost in elementary every year. So we're opening a new school in the fall of 2019 in Deer Creek. So that's the next to open. 
in 2020, we'll open a new middle school. The address is actually 76th Avenue and Cheyenne Street. Mm -hmm. So it's actually a Horace yep. address. And then the new high school will come in 2021. Our new middle school will open to house approximately 800 students. We won't open with that many students, but given our projections and the growth, we, we see that coming. Um, should the time come, we will be prepared to add on to that school to accommodate up to 1,200 students. Our new high school will open with 1,000 students in 2021, and then we'll accommodate um, up to 1,500 students in that school as well, wow. if we need to add on. So we're, we're trying to take it step by step and to be you know, very um, careful and, and thoughtful in how we're spending taxpayers' money. And so that is um, why we're taking that in stages at this point. And where will the high school be located? It's going to be on the same um, section of land. Sure. So it won't be in the, it'll be very similar to what you see at Cheyenne and Liberty. Okay. And do we have a name for the school yet? Is that coming? That, that will be coming. It's okay. so a great question. So um, starting in December and working our way into March, we have a transition team that includes parents and staff and students to talk about what that transition will look like, team colors, um, a team name, school names, and, and all of that type of work will happen through that collaborative committee. Is it difficult to manage this growth? You have to hire new teachers. You have to find land. I mean, it is crazy. Is that is it yes. kind of a double-edged sword, good and bad? I think we have gotten very um, accomplished at opening elementary schools because we've opened so many. We have processes in place. But the challenge that I find for the team that I am working with is that um, we're constantly having to ensure that with the additional staff that we're adding, that they are fully trained in our guaranteed and viable curriculum. Our job is to educate students, to provide them with an education that will prepare them for tomorrow's world. And it's very important that we stay focused on that, even though we have some of these other things happening, you know, building and planning for the building, colors, furniture, mm -hmm. getting libraries set up. So at any given year, we're moving many, many teachers. Um, we have to fill in the new schools with experienced teachers from the district, and then we have to also hire from the outside. So for example, this year we hired 134 new teachers mm -hmm. to ensure that they have a full understanding of the content that they're expected to teach, our technology, um, all of those pieces, how we do business in West Fargo is, is very taxing, but the team is fabulous and, and they get it done. They really do get it done. Have you had the boundary issue problems that Fargo has had? I mean, my family's experienced those as well, or because of the growth, have you been able to kind of keep people where they are without moving boundaries? Tell me about that. Well, boundaries are challenging. Um, I would say that we haven't had the problems to the extent that maybe Fargo has had, but we did move boundaries last year um, it was decided that we would no longer have kindergarten centers, and that meant that we had to move all of the kindergartners back into their home schools. By doing that, we had to move students out of some of our schools. So for example, once we needed kindergarten at Ellie Berger, we knew that we had to go from having three sections of, uh, or four sections of third grade down to three, for example. So one teacher had to move to a new building. So there was a lot of movement for this fall. And there was some pain for some families. Um, they expressed concern, but the decisions were made collaboratively with um, a team that included parents that really looked at all the pros and cons. And if there's one thing I've learned in 25 years of education is it's very hard to please everyone. Oh, yeah. And um, even though there were, were some transitions for some families, um, we did the best we could to accommodate any requests that they had. If we could keep them in the home school, we did. Um, if they would provide their own transportation. But I do understand that as a, as a parent, that that's really hard on families. And it's because they love their home school. Mm -hmm. And that's a great reason to want to stay at their home school. But the transitions have gone well. When you hire all these new teachers, mm -hmm. can you find enough teachers? Because there's very low unemployment around here. I mean, right. there, are there enough to fill the jobs? We're fortunate in that we do have universities in the area and you know nearby. So for many of our positions, we do have ample um, pool of teachers to choose from. Uh, it is more difficult in the specialty area, specifically special education um, beca can become very challenging to find positions, people for them to fill. So 
We do struggle with finding enough paraprofessionals. That has been a hard. We struggle with enough bus drivers. So we are also feeling um, some challenging times when trying to find employees to work in our district. Mm -hmm. I know you like to be upfront mm -hmm. on issues, so I wanted mm -hmm. to ask you about, there's been, you know, in the last four right. or five years, a couple high profile cases right. involving West Fargo teachers, sexual misconduct. The most recent one, Shannon Mosier, did mm -hmm. plead guilty. Uh, how does the district deal with these issues when they pop up? Our district is really tries hard to be very transparent and address the concern immediately and to investigate the situation. I, I was on the job 12 days, I believe, when I got the call that we had a teacher um, that was in this situation you just described. Uh, in that particular situation, the teacher um, resigned that same day, and it was really all in the law enforcement's hands okay. at that time. Um, if the case comes to be that the teacher is still employed, we do conduct an investigation. Depending on what they're being accused of, they may be put on some type of leave until the investigation can be completed. But we always fully cooperate with our police department. They have been a, a partner with us, keeping us informed on different scenarios, different situations that may involve our students. Um, we work well with them with the, having our school resource officers. And I, I just, I can't tell you what a great relief it is to me as a superintendent to have such competent and reliable, dependable, honest, um, police officers and leadership in our police department to help us do our job. And I know you like to talk to parents about this, especially mm -hmm. since the most recent case broke. Can you tell me about those conversations? Well, when I when I first heard about all of the the things that I was hearing, I was I was very much disturbed, as was everyone who heard the story. And I really felt it was important that that the parents knew that we were going to address these concerns, that we weren't going to try to sweep them under the rug or pretend that they didn't happen because they did happen. And it was very, very bad. And my mission is to ensure that nothing like that ever happens again. Because we have many kinds of drills that we do with our, our students to ensure that they're safe from fires. We do lockdown drills. We have active shooter drills. But what happened in our school harmed more students than in our history that I've known of. And um, those effects will be long lasting. So we started with um, public forums to try to share with parents what we learned in that particular case because we learned about ways students are using their phones mm -hmm. to connect with other students and other adults. And we were shocked by some of the things that we learned. So we thought we need to tell parents this. So let's just get out there in front of it. We put it live on Facebook so anybody could watch and ask questions. Um, we've recently had another um, event, State of the Schools event, where we talked about um, su substance abuse. Actually, it was a um, student success forum is what that one was. Um, and we had a panel, and we had people talking very honestly, parents telling us about their own child and what they suffered with their child through substance abuse and letting them know that the, the the problem is real and addiction is real and we need to take the stigma away from that and get people help. And really the dangers of students, children particularly, who are in their adolescent years partaking in marijuana and alcohol, what a damaging effect that can have long term beyond what maybe people even realize up front. We do have two more student success forums coming up and um, we're excited to have panels for both of those. We'll air those live. Um, one will be um, addressing more on the social media, and then the last one will be on mental health and, again, supporting our students with mental health issues. Talk about some success stories, classroom and sports at West Fargo. There's so many great things going on, and it's fun to talk about um, wonderful teaching that's happening in our district. Um, as far as our sports, um, we have fabulous coaches and fabulous teams. We had two volleyball, both our girls' volleyball teams were into the state tournament, performed very, very well. Um, our, our soccer team has um, taken a state championship, um, which is really exciting because our soccer has a variety of 
um, ethnic cultures and languages that mm -hmm. are spoke, and so really bringing different cultures and different backgrounds together to work together as a team and then to accomplish a state championship, that's huge. Um, one really nice story was um, I received an email from my superintendent who was out of state in Minnesota sharing with me um, that there had been a death in his family and that the boys hockey team had stopped by um, the, the player and this player was in Grand Forks and our Cheyenne hockey team stopped by to extend their condolences and to give a card and, and flowers to the family and what an outreach of support even though they're, they're rivals, they play each other but they knew that that student had lost their mother and how touched this superintendent was. So sometimes I get emails from other superintendents and you open it up and you think, uh oh, what happened? And then you read something like this and you're, you feel so great. Um, our district with our, our students and our staff are really working towards trying to be progressive. So not just always doing the same thing. We're looking towards opportunities to really differentiate instruction and meet students' needs. So it's and not all test scores. It's and all not like all that. test scores. And now with our Choice Ready, which is part of the Every Child Succeeds Act, um, our state has adopt, adopted Choice Ready. And so we're looking at many factors about a student. We're talking about, um, yes, how they perform as far as proficiency, but we're looking at growth. We're looking for, are they involved in activities? Are they able to manage a job outside of school? Um, are they physically fit? Are they emotionally healthy? Are they getting the things that they need um, to be great students, but then also great citizens of our community? Are they participating in community service? Um, lots of different areas that we're considering now because we know that that helps um, students be successful in the real world. So. Um, I will say that in West Fargo, that every grade level that takes the North Dakota State Assessment, so that's grades three through eight, um, that every grade level in, in our district was above the state average in both math and English language arts. And it ranged from above um, by two percent points all the way up to 16 per points higher than the state average. So that tells me that even though we are really focusing on a lot of our energies on building new schools and, and managing the growth. But we're staying focused on the reason why we're here, and that's to educate students. Um, our district is going to be involved now for the next five years with a pilot with the state um, to really look at personalizing learning and to give students more choice and voice in their way they um, show their learning. Um, and really get them engaged and excited about the things they're passionate about. So we're, we've got great things happening in West Fargo. A couple minutes left. The North Dakota legislative session is yes. upon us. What are some funding things you're keeping an eye on, requests? Uh, how does that work? Well, we are very active in West Fargo. Um, myself and our business manager, Mark Lemire, are, are part of um, groups at the state level that really look at these areas and what do we need. It really comes down to for West Fargo, because we are growing so fast, funding is key. And so um, we're looking towards that we are funded on the, the amount of students we have. Currently we're funded on the amount of students in the previous year. Well, if you're growing right. by 500 students a year and you're being funded on last year's enrollment numbers, you're still required to educate those students, mm -hmm. put a teacher in front of them in a nice classroom with materials and books, but to be funded um, late, a year later, is really hard for us. So we know that it's not an easy fix to get that shifted for the state. Um, and we believe that we, we want support for all districts. We don't want the haves and the have-nots within the state. We're a team as a state as but well. But you have different needs than schools, But we have schools, different needs, yeah. right. right. So that's a priority, um, looking at our funding for transportation that has decreased in the, in the past few years. Our costs are going up in the area of transportation. We have a lot of pressure to provide rides for students, um, and we want to. We want to, but it's a very expensive um, part of our budget is the transportation, so that's an area. Um, we continue to look at mental health and supports and, and um, money for supporting our students. Safety mm -hmm. is also key. So there's a lot of areas that we're working on. And finally, if people want more information about the school district, where do they go, website? 
Um, the West Fargo Public School website is very complete with many areas of information. Social media, we are on Facebook. Um, you can go to Twitter. There are places on our website where you can ask questions, but you can also ask them on, on Facebook, and we're very good about getting back to people right away. So okay. lots of information on our website. Thanks, Beth, for being here. Thank you for having me. My guest has been Beth Sleddy, the West Fargo Superintendent of Schools. Stay tuned for more. Rooted in the tradition of classic American and folk storytelling with a bit of blues and Southern soul, the Jeff Krause Trio creates a spirit that evolves around the acceptance of the highs and lows of everyday life. I wish I could have been stronger today. I let you down my pride in the way you needed me to on my weakest today and all I have left is the apology
Well, that's all we have on Prairie Pulse for this week. And as always, thanks for watching. Funding for Minnesota Legacy Programs are provided by a grant from the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4, 2008 and by the members of Prairie Public.